If you wonder how to score 99th percentile in the CSI Net Life Science examination, then this video is just for you. Because in this video, I'm going to tell you what do you need to get into the 99th percentile. Because many of you may score 90th percentile, 92th percentile, 94th percentile, 95th percentile. That's not enough for a general category student to get JRF. 98 percentile is not enough 99 percentile more than 99 percentile is the percentile score that you need to get actual raw score need to be more than 120 or even sometimes more than 125 in order to qualify the CSI net life science examination so what you should do what should you do right at this moment to get your score above 99 percentile this is the mind map where i'm going to tell you i'm going to explain all the different strategies that we have where we can implement the strategies to increase our scores from 70 80 percentile level to the 99 percentile level and if you follow my advice on this then you are going to improve your percentile score by a greater margin so watch this video till the end so let's move on and let's start the strategy, the CSI Net Life Science strategy to score 99 percentile or above 99 percentile score. So for that, I'll dig into this mind map and our goal is to score more than 120 raw marks. Raw score must be more than 120. Even you can keep it as 125 for even safer side. So the target for 99 plus percentile is to score more than 125. Okay, so how do we do it, right? That's the question. So let's dig in. For that, we have some core strategies to follow. What are those core strategies? So that is high yield units. Identify high yield units from where repeatedly the questions are asked. So what are those units? Here, unit one biochemistry is a high yield unit. Unit two cell biology is also high yield. Although the question, direct question from unit two is not there, but Unit 2 questions are interlinked with unit 12, with unit 6, with unit 4, right, we need 3. So that's why uh, unit 2 is very important, you cannot skip unit 2. Next is molecular biology, unit 3, very very important high yield unit. Unit 4 cell signaling, communication, immunology, cancer biology, host pathogen interaction, hugely important. Developmental biology or unit 5 is important. Developmental biology is very important. Next is unit 8 genetics. It is also very important. Unit 10 ecology, unit 11 evolutionary biology. These are all important units that you should not miss. And high yield unit means repetitive units. Means units from where questions are asked repetitively, repetitively in the examination. That is very, very important. Next is the paper strategy. What strategy should we focus for preparing and answering a paper in CS and life science. Here we go with part C first. 100 marks are there in part C and your target is to get 100 out of 100. Believe me, if you score more in part C, it is going to take your load off of part B and part A because you cannot commit more on part B because those are memory based direct questions. Hit or miss. But part C questions are conceptual questions. So if you build your concept and if you can uh, continue to think in the direction of the question, you might get a proper answer in part C. Thinking can give you right answer to part C, but cannot give you right answer to part B. That's why part C should be your strongest friend. And here you should attempt 20 to 25 correct questions with over 90% accuracy, which will give you near about 85 to above 90 marks. And you should be targeting above 90 marks. Believe me, if you want to score more than 125, you need to score more than 90 in part C. Next is part B where 70 marks total questions 70 marks are there. You need to answer 18 to 22 questions right and approximate score of uh, like uh, from here uh, in part B from 18 to 22 if you score even 50, 15 questions correct you will get 30 marks from that. Some will be uh, negative marking considering that even 25 to 28 marks will be good enough right along with part C and part B, you are good enough to reach that 120 marks very close. Now part A, 30 marks 
Among them, 8 to 10 questions are very easy. If you check CSINET part A, particularly for CSINET life sciences, the questions are very, very easy. In fact, you don't need to rely on mathematical questions. If you fear math as a biology student, it's fine. Do not go into the math questions. Just go into the reasoning, aptitude based questions, IQ solve questions and those IQ questions can be, can be solved with your basic IQ and skill and you can easily answer 8 to 10 questions correctly. That will give you 16 to 20 marks. Now if you add these marks together, let's say 90 in part C, let's say 30 in part B. So 120 is already done. Then we have another 15 or 20. So 135 to 140 is your target. So you can reach 135 to 40 and if that is your target of reaching 135 to 140, you are going to reach 125 and 120. So, if you keep your target 150, then you will reach 130. If you keep your target 130, then you will reach 110. Remember that. So, keep your target always high. Set your targets high. Otherwise, it will be a bad idea. Okay. So, that is the paper strategy. What next is the resources to use for this preparation to get the 99 percentile. Now the resources are PYQ's booklet. For last 10 years CSI and question papers, their previous years questions and answer explanations. If they are segregated into units, that is better because you prepare unit wise. So you need unit wise segregated questions and practice them for your own uh, requirement. Mock test series 10 plus in the last 30 days of your preparation. While you prepare for the examination in the last month of your preparation, at least attempt in 10 plus mock tests. Basically test from all the units, individual units and then test from the all units. Now test covering all the units, you can attain 2 to 3 tests is sufficient. Even more than that, you can go with 5 tests or 6 complete tests, that's your choice. But get at least 2 overall full syllabus mock tests to be prepared and, uh, and attend in the last 30 days of the exam preparation. Conceptual videos where you have YouTube or coaching services. If you join a coaching, they are going to provide you with the lecture videos. And this YouTube channel, Shomus Biology channel is there, the largest reserver of the biological sciences videos where you have more than 4000 vi videos and access to them. You search, you just get inside my channel and search any topic, you will find a video on that topic and you read it from that. It's going to help you prepare for that. And you are also going to get these tips and tricks videos on CSIR net, right? Many people believe that I only make videos on tips and tricks of CSIR, but they don't know that I've already made videos on all the other subjective topics. It's basically all done. I'm there for 14 years in YouTube, 14 years, one four. And I've covered all the topics multiple times, but the fundamentals of those topics did not change. That's why I don't make new videos on those topics because those videos are still valid. So go through those videos. Next is flashcards and concept maps. So again, I'm the only one who's going to provide you the mind map. I'm the only one who's going to provide you the flashcards. It's only available in Shomus Valley. You can get our mind map book from Amazon or Flipkart. It's available. You can get it and it, it will help you for revision. And the price is less than 500 rupees. So you can, uh, you can purchase it anytime. It's your choice. But this is the only mind map book out there that will help you to visualize the concept for quick revision and uh, reference books for the clarity. If you need clarity on any subject, if you need to prepare your basics on any subject, then go with the peer-reviewed books because nothing is better than peer-reviewed books. Lodish for the cell biology, Bruce Alberts for the cell biology, Leninger for biochemistry. So these are the fundamental books that you can always refer to. But they will take time to cover. Videos take less time, but always put the books higher than videos or any other Indian author books that are out there. These are holy grail of biological sciences. Should not avoid it. Okay. And next, so these are the resources that you should use. Next is the 60 days routine plan. You need to plan your 60 days routine, two months routine. Four hours a day is a conceptual study. Two hours a day is PYQ solving and one hour a day is revision with mind map or flashcards. That's going to give you a total seven hours a day. I will give you seven hours a day preparation for the last two months of your CSI net preparation time frame. Not less than seven hours. If you have a nine to five job, then you need to keep your target a year or year and a half for the preparation of the net. But if you are MSc pass out candidate and completely can focus on this exam, seven hours a day 
is the time. And in the weekends, it will be 8 hours a day. No more parties in the weekend. Put more time to it. 1 to 2 more hours for mock test or unit wise test, test practice and review. So that's 7 to 8 to 9 hours of preparation I am talking about. This much time you need to devote to get an answer because this exam is highly competitive. The number of seats are limited and applicants are huge. Now you should have a weekly plan. What is the plan? Uh, you, week 1 to 3 unit wise topic test. You need 4 to 5 mixed unit tests. You need 6 8 full syllabus mock tests. That's what you should follow uh, for your complete weekly plan of examinations or, or checking your skills. Why do you take mock test? To, to see your skills about a particular examination, about a particular unit. Mistakes to avoid is another very, very crucial. Nobody is going to tell you, but this is one of the most important point that you need to know. Mistakes to avoid. Ignoring general aptitude. I have known many, many aspirants who ignore general aptitude completely. Even I have seen people who scored rank 1, even rank 1 to rank 1 to 10. And they rank 1 to 10 even without touching general aptitude. Right? But don't do that. Although they did it because they scored 100 out of 100 in part C and also 40, 45, 50, 60 out of 70 in part B. But don't risk it, right? Don't ignore general aptitude. Over relying on low weight units. Now, if you devote all your time preparing for those units which are not repetitive, then that's a waste of time. Don't do that. Next is skipping PYQs. If you have not checked the previous year's questions, then there is no point of even attending CSNET examination. Because until or unless you check the previous year's question papers, you are not ready to understand the type of questions that they ask. And you will never be ready because those are the type of questions you needed to answer in the examination. Attempting too many risky part C questions. When you attempt part C questions, you just can't attempt blindfoldedly any question that comes. People answer, like people tend to answer, many of the students, many aspirants tend to answer questions which are presented early, right? So there are 75 part C questions. You need to answer only 25 out of them. So basically, for every three question, you need to answer one part C question. So what you are going to do is that most of the students, they try to answer the questions which are provided earlier. So you're Question number 1, 2, 3, 4, they try to answer them. What they think is that, uh, let's say, because then I'm going to, I may be run out of time. But that's not the case. It might be possibility that 5 consecutive part C questions you're leaving. Because you don't understand. You, don't, you haven't prepared that topic. It's completely fine. You answered question number 1. Then you miss question 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You leave all them. You get at question number 8, which is on your zone. Then you attend it, the chance of scoring high is good. But if by question 2 to question 7, you don't know the correct answers, you're not confident, but if you attend those questions, you'll end up in getting negative marking. So don't do that. This is a big mistake. Remember, these are all practical experiences my students face. And based on that, I build this mind map. So don't do that. So these are the mistakes to avoid. And the final tip with which we are going to end this session. Revise what you study and practice what you revise. Solve PYQs like a ritual guys. Solve PYQs like a ritual. This is the quote. Just print it out, put it somewhere and revise it every single day. Revise what you study and practice what you revise. And solve PYQs like a ritual. If you rigorously follow this routine, nobody, nobody is going to stop you from getting more than 99 percentile. And that's a Shomu's biology promise. That's my promise to you. Okay? So I believe I clarify your doubt regarding scoring more than 99 percentile with a methodical approach with the help of the mind map. And if you want to get this mind map, then you need to download our app, Shomu's biology app from the Google Play Store. And... Inside the study material window, you can find this mind map as a soft copy image which you can visualize and can understand about. And you can reconstruct that on your own in the paper and 
in that way your preparation will be a lot lot easier if you really like this video hit a like button if you don't like this video hit a dislike button and share this video with your friends subscribe to get more videos like that in future thank you i'll see you in the next video